Katherine Schreiber for Broadway and Beyond TV. And I'm so thrilled to have Rick Ellis with us today, one of the most brilliant and sought after writers in theater. So I'm going to admit him in from the waiting room. Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Rick Ellis. Well, hello. This what a surprise. Look who popped in today. I want to get to what you're doing now, but I just want to go over some of the incredible things that you have done that have made so many people so happy, like Peter and the Starcatcher, which was such a joy and was nominated for well, my I, American. Well, it only life. happened because of you, my dear. You know. Well, I, mean, I ha yes, one of the first plays I co-produced on Broadway, and it was just a joy, and it's one of the most done, most produced plays in the U.S. right now. So, you know, I, if I, if, if well, not right if, now. If I had my press agent here, or I should say, if I had a press agent yes. <laughs> and that person were here, yes. uh, that person would say that you are looking at um, the author of the number one most produced musical in uh, 2019 and the number four most produced play, number three being William Shakespeare. So I'm very, very happy to come oh, behind William congratulations. Shakespeare. congratulations. Um, and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really amount to much except that uh, the 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 stuff that I've done seems to you know people. You mean like Jersey to, Boys? That that that. Uh, that no, the Adams Family. It's the number one um, the number one most produced musical in North America. I don't mean to be shocked, but um, I'm congratulations. Shocked. Be shocked. Be shocked. I thought, I'm I thought shocked. that was the Jersey Boys. So okay. I was shocked. I was shocked. Jersey Boys isn't licensed that much because Jersey Boys is still on, you know, right, you know, right, uh, right. commercially. So wow. Um, yeah, family. like and, oh. and uh, you know, it's it's like the last. In the last four out of five years, it's been the number one most licensed show. It's insane. People Amazing. like to laugh. That it's people like to laugh, and I think that I think that if you know if theater comes back soon, and we're all still you know speaking uh, an, an American version yeah. of English, um, uh, you know, I think that uh, I think musical comedy will be will come back in a big way because big people, way. we need to laugh. What first got you? What first created your love for theater? What got you first involved? Well, my mother took me to uh, see a play when I was three years old. It was My Fair Lady on Broadway at the Mark Hellinger Theater, which is now a church. My brother is three years older than me. She was a, you know, she was a, my father worked on weekends. She was a young mother with two kids and- What are you gonna do? And tickets were 90 cents. Tickets were 90 cents and a babysitter was more expensive. So she had a, she had sort of a high concept idea. She thought she would take us to the theater and see if it was a way to spend an afternoon. And while my brother was very fidgety, according to my mom, she, uh, I sat there completely, you know, like that for three hours. And it was the first time in my young life that I had actually been quiet. So she kept taking me to the theater. And I remember one of my earliest decisions in my life was, this is where I want to be. This is where I like being. And I just want to be in these big dark rooms for the rest of my life. So I, um, I love that. And it shows the importance of theater and bringing kids to theater and exposing them at a young age so that people can find other things that they might love to do or find that passion. Yeah. So. And Thank that, you, you know, bear in mind in those days that, you know, it was, it was very affordable to go. Yeah. Like so it, today. It, it wasn't as elite as it is now. It wasn't yeah. so, it, it, you know, you didn't have to, you know, take out a, a loan. But we have to, to work on that as theater. We have to, we have to make that more accessible. Well, I imagine, I imagine that's going to be one of the unintended uh, uh, consequences of yes. returning is that ticket COVID prices will be much faster for a while. Yes. Uh, and I think that that's great. Mr. Ellis, as we've discussed just briefly about the importance of theater, I would like to ask you of the shows that you have done, which show do you think has affected people in an in a important way or inspired people? Is there any one of your shows that you feel has made a difference in the world that way, besides just pure entertainment? Oh, uh, well, I, you know, make a, make a difference in the world is-, is Changing sorry, lives or inspire. I can, you, I can talk to you about plays that have made me feel, you know, that, that they have accomplished that. I couldn't possibly say that about anything that I did. I, well, I, I will say one thing, Cher. Well, I don't think that that changed anything about the way people see the world. I think it inspires people. I think that the female issue, she was, I mean, just to well, get- she out. does. She does. Yeah. You know, she is, she is sort of a minister to her audience. Uh, but yes, the idea of ministering to a, to a group of people yes. is theater at its, at its best form. Of course, it's yes. meant to entertain. But of course, 
the fact that it can change lives, or as Noel Coward used to say, can make the hair stand up on the back of your neck and make you thank God for the day you were born, I think is one of the, is how it changes lives. Yes. It gives you, if it gives you a, a worldview, you know, that includes hope and optimism and the absence of cynicism and, and, and a, a little bit less despair, um, then I think the theater is great. After all, um, we have it in our DNA to like, we like to be in the dark uh, with strangers, listening to someone tell us stories. We've been doing that since, you know, yes. we're in caves and sitting around a campfire. So the socializing experience is part of the theater experience, the live event. And I think, right. um, you know, and I think that that's, unfortunately now it's, it's our curse because the live event can happen. But, uh, but as soon as it can happen, people will, uh, people will come back because everybody wants it.